Good morning everybody, my name is Shelby and welcome to my channel. We're gonna be out here harvesting right now. My husband's gonna help me as well as my son. We've got a lot to get to. There's tons of tomatoes that are ripe. Yesterday I harvested about like eight or nine pounds of tomatoes I would say, just like on a whim. We know that we need to get all the rest of this harvested and start canning as much as possible because we don't want any of it to go to waste. And that's the whole goal is to have tomato sauce like from our garden for as most of the year as possible. So anything that has remote color right now, we're harvesting. So if it's just starting to turn orange, right now the heat is not our friend. Uh, we don't want our tomatoes splitting. So basically if it's not all the way red, it's fine, pick it. I'm gonna allow them to ripen on the counter instead of ripening on the vine. You might see a lot of browning on a lot of my tomato plants or you will see that on a lot of my tomato plants that's because we had like a whole week of crazy 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 rain uh, that just did not allow the soil or anything like that to dry out which definitely brought in various different diseases Mama, I. Okay, I think we've gotten pretty much all of the tomatoes except for all the cherry tomatoes, but uh, baby just woke up, we gotta go inside. I'm really interested to see how many pounds we have right now. I'm gonna weigh it and let you guys know. All right, we're back here in the kitchen. What I'm gonna do right now is get to work cleaning the tomatoes, and then I'm going to separate the ones that are ripe and ready to make sauce right now versus the ones that need to counter ripen for a few days. I'm also going to be washing the tomatoes, just soaking them in a vinegar solution. Um, um, as I'm like rinsing and cleaning them through. I weighed both of the bags. What do you guys think the final weight is of both tomato bags combined? Drum roll please. It's 41 pounds of tomatoes. That is so mind blowing. And we have been literally harvesting like that basket full size. I would say like every maybe like three or four days. Uh, so it is insane to think because this is the first time I've weighed everything just I would like to have weighed everything and documented it, you know, but just life is just too, it just got ahead of me this season. So next season I'm definitely weighing everything because this is amazing that just those two bags alone is 41 pounds of tomatoes. One time I had a commenter ask me why I like to wash the uh, vegetables in a vinegar solution. Well, I will tell you, it is because you will wash off mold spores, fruit fly eggs, any type of caterpillar eggs, and generally make it safer from listeria, salmonella, anything like that, and extend the shelf life. I am back. We are going to get to making sauce and canning today. So I couldn't have canned everything all in the same day because uh, half of the tomatoes weren't even ripe yet. So I'll show you what they look like now. Now they're a really nice deep red color where a few days ago most of them actually looked like this. And as you can see, this one is starting to turn red as well. But that's what we want is them to be really deep red, nice and ripe. So now that most of my tomatoes are ripe, we can get to making sauce and canning. My mom is gonna help me with the canning process. She has more uh, canners and pressure cookers and all that different type of stuff so that the process can be quicker and easier to manage with the two little kids. For reference today, I am using the recipe out of the um, ball cookbook because I want to make sure that I'm not gonna, you know, make a recipe that's not safe. I'm following it to the T because I am a second time canner as of tomorrow. Technically, I've never even done it by myself. Uh, so I'm playing it safe, y'all. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't wanna end up poisoning myself or my family. 
I'm just, I'm gonna admit, I am somebody who has like extreme anxiety. I went to culinary school and in culinary school we had to take like a food safety course like a like a whole education class on food safety and i remember just like a little backstory just so that you know where i'm coming from in that uh class we had this whole like process about talking about botulism it scared me to death to where every can that i bought ever since then i always like wrap my hand around it to make sure there's like no dents or anything i know i'm like way overthinking this but with that said that's why i want to be super safe and follow the instructions to the t i'm not cutting any corners and if you're following this video definitely do your own research to first this is not necessarily like a I mean, I guess it is going to be a how-to video, but you do your own research too, and don't go into this whole process not knowing what you're doing. I guess I don't really know what I'm doing, but I am following this to a team so that, you know, these people do know what they're doing and that I'm not giving you guys misinformation. So I will post the recipe on in the description, and I'm going to talk about it in here. That way uh, you know exactly what recipe I'm using. I am timesing this recipe by four because I have about 40 pounds of tomatoes and each one individual recipe calls for 10 pounds of tomatoes. So I'll put the times one recipe in the description and you can do what you want with it. So for today, I'm picking the sweet Vidalia onion or just a sweet onion. I have found that, um, let's put that right there. I found that the sweet onions actually don't make my eyes um, like tear up as much as the other onions. And I say that while my eyes are starting to like tear up. I get really affected by the onions. My brother-in-law is so silly and he's gonna see this. He, whenever he cuts up onions, he puts on like these goggles, like worker goggles, and it looks so funny when he's cutting up onions, but he swears that it works. So maybe he's got the right idea. Maybe I need to get myself some goggles. So I absolutely love cooking with fresh garlic. However, it is such a pain taking the little garlic cloves out of their skin. So if anybody has any awesome garlic peeling hacks, definitely comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Onions and garlic have been chopped up super easy in the blender your blender or your food processor is your friend i don't know if you can see but my eyes are like still pretty bloodshot right now anyways moving on we have the johnny Appleseed uh sauce maker it's my new favorite toy i used it a few days ago to make sauce basically i went out to the garden to harvest on a whim I ended up harvesting like 10 pounds um just unexpectedly because there's so many tomatoes out there started i intended to harvest all the tomatoes that were out there started to storm so i ran back in with just 10 pounds of tomatoes and i was like hey let's hook up this bad boy see what's going on and um we did it literally got all of the like skins and seeds and things like that extracted from the tomatoes in like seriously five ten minutes i don't even know it was like no time at all no effort and then we were left with all of the wonderful juice uh, from the tomatoes and made some amazing marinara sauce since then we actually used our marinara sauce to uh, for pizza i made like a sourdough pizza crust and it was phenomenal my husband was literally like we should start a pizzeria and i was like no we're not starting a pizzeria but i do appreciate the compliment that this was good so that's what we're using today it's going to make things a lot easier and um, that's my little history backstory with making a uh, marinara sauce today or this week if i'm not careful my son is going to start walking away with all the tomatoes he can get his hands on. What I'm doing right now is condensing all my tomatoes into one bag so that we can run through them really quickly. With this machine, you don't have to like core out, you don't have to really do a lot of prep to it. So um, we actually are like limited on bowls at our house. That's why I'm moving everything into one big like Aldi bag. As you can see. Look at that. Small miles. Miles here. 
for me and my husband, it's just a full circle moment to make sauce together as a family, cook it, can it, and then, you know, later talk about it like, wow, this came from our garden. This is such a great feeling. I'm just putting a few tomatoes through the hopper at a time, uh, just like four or five at a time. And then I'm using the big side of the little pressy thing uh, while just pushing them in there and they pretty much glide right in there and it just separates the seeds from the, the seeds in the skin from like all the good stuff basically and then the seeds in the skin come out right here I don't know if you can see and I have a bowl that is going to catch that so the good part about this side with the seeds in the skin is if you have a bunch of chickens or you know if you want to compost i i personally wouldn't compost that many seeds because i wouldn't want a bunch of tomatoes um randomly in random places but there's lots of options that you can do i've even heard of people dehydrating all of that and like making a tomato powder out of it uh, so do what you want but it all just kind of comes out of this area and then you're left with just straight up juice all right, so we just got done uh, with juicing or extracting all of, like the uh, skins and seeds from all of the tomatoes. So a little bit about that. I thought we were gonna have more tomatoes because it turns out some of them are not ripe, some of the beef steaks, which is fine. But what was a big heavy hitter was at the end, we started juicing the cherry tomatoes and that was like, basically unjuiceable. So we're, we're never gonna do that again. It was like seed crazy. The actual juicer was like super clogged. It was almost like there was no fibers and things like that to extract from it. So that was like a big road block, I would say as far as like weight for uh, the tomato sauce. So I saved like the other big bag of um, cherry tomatoes that I had out that you had seen. I'm just gonna make sun-dried tomatoes with that big bag because uh, it was just, it wasn't gonna happen. It wasn't possible basically. So just note that if you do have um, that like Johnny Appleseed juicer thing, um, that, or whatever it's called, I said what it was before. If you have that particular juicer thing, then just know I would not recommend putting cherry tomatoes in there because it's not really gonna work. So I weighed out the sauce, what's left um, after like the beef steaks that weren't ripe. And um, I actually took the sauce out of the pan, weighed the pan, put the sauce back in. I know I'm overthinking this and all that, but anyways, the sauce, is 15 pounds worth of sauce. So I'm gonna adjust the recipe and all that, you know, not that it really matters. And also, the reason why we have less sauce is because when we were juicing the tomatoes, we started to, uh, we like cleaned it out halfway through, and then my husband started to juice the pineapple tomatoes. So it was like a fresh, clean bowl and a clean situation. He was like, this looks really different than the rest of the sauce. This is like, kind of like a golden color and the rest of the sauce is, you know, a deep red. Why don't we save this, set it aside and make uh, just like an actual like pineapple um, tomato sauce with this for like pineapple pizza, uh, like a Hawaiian pizza, something like that. So that's what we did. I'll show the difference in what they look like. I looked it up online and it says that you can safely can any variety of tomatoes, whether they're orange or yellow. I hope that's the case. So um, don't take my word for it. You do your own research, but that's what we're going to attempt to do. So um, we're going to get the sauce going. It's going to take a few hours to boil down. You want it to boil to about half of the original height that it was like in the pot or less if you want a thicker sauce. And I'm going to go for a little bit less than half, about like almost like a third of what the actual um, sauce was originally. So it's really just whatever your particular preference is, like how thick you want the sauce. Making marinara sauce, tomato sauce, is not meant to be complicated. It's really simple ingredients, but it's just mostly, you know, 
good quality ingredients and time too. That's really what sets good sauce apart from, you know, mediocre sauce, I would say, is just the quality of the ingredient and the time that you spend to make sure it's done well. Okay, I'm here with my mom and we are doing a canning day. It's my second time canning, first time around. She was here as well. You have been canning now for how long? A little over a year. We don't, so we've not are, an expert. Not an expert. Yeah, she's not an expert, but she has taken it upon herself to research it a lot. And, uh, you know, she's done it a whole bunch of times. She's been canning ground beef. She's been can canning um, pressure green canning. pressure canning green beans and all everything, you name it. So I do trust her with such a simple task of canning tomato sauce. That's why I have her hanging out with me today while I get to learn the ropes. Let's get started. To start out, make sure your lids, jars, the screw part of the lid, everything is completely cleaned and sanitized in super hot soap and water or boiled. You're also going to be using citric acid or bottled lemon juice in each jar. So you're gonna notice that in the recipe. We're gonna fill up as many of these jars as the amount of sauce that we have. So this is from my pineapple tomatoes. It's, I already talked about, you know, how we came to this conclusion, but after trying it, it is amazing how different in flavor certain varieties of tomatoes are. And I was kind of adding like all of my tomatoes into one batch, like my Moneymaker tomatoes, my San Marzano, all that, just thinking, what's the big deal? Now, after doing this one individual type of tomato, I see why it's important sometimes to isolate varieties. So my next batch of tomato sauce is going to be exclusively San Marzano because now I really appreciate what, like I said, that one um, variety of tomato does. Very, very sweet. I only added one teaspoon of sugar to this and it literally tastes like I added like a lot of sugar to it. It's very sweet, very um, fruity, very fruity notes. So very interesting. The golden sauce, as I like to refer to it as, and I believe it's what, a half an inch headspace? Go up, right up to the line, the first line. That first line gives you an inch, so that's good right there. Okay, beautiful. All right, so. You gotta come up with, with a name here, this sauce, because it's basically something you created. I know, I'm, we're calling it the golden sauce right now, our golden pineapple sauce. Look how many tomatoes it takes just to make that. That took, I would say, gosh, I don't even know, over 10 beefsteak tomatoes just to make these two little pints. The pineapple. Yeah, of the pineapple, of the pineapple beefsteaks. Like, these are very sizable Oh, the pineapple tomatoes. is a beefsteak? Yeah, it's like a huge beefsteak. It's important to work with hot sauce in your jars. You don't want to introduce cold sauce in a cold glass and put that in a pressure cooker or a boiling pot of water because your glass could definitely break or shatter with the contrast and heat. Hate to admit, but I didn't grow any basil yet so far this year. There's still lots of time to do that. Um, but I went and bought some basil from the store, which there's nothing wrong with doing that at all. I'm just typically somebody who has like tons of basil in their garden. So what we're going to do is top off each jar with a little leaf of basil so that it looks pretty, tastes good. Now it's time to debubble, which is just, it's what it sounds like. You're just getting all the bubbles out and everything. Oops, I'm making a mess. I'm going to do this one at the end. And there shouldn't be a lot of bubbles in this because of the consistency of it, but you, yeah. have to, you still have to do it. What I wanted to say about the sauce, because I didn't um, show how much it reduced, I hate that I didn't do that for you guys. You can see that on the line when you're cooking down the sauce, so it reduced by more than half. When you're making the marinara sauce, you're going to think at some point, I just made a whole bunch of tomato sauce, like tomato soup basically. And if you continue just to cook it down, it goes from being really liquidy and tomato soup-like to magically turning into a marinara sauce. It gets chunky again, so don't give up. Just keep cooking it down until it is the preferred consistency that you want. And this is exactly like a store-bought type marinara because I just kept cooking and cooking and cooking it down. I love what the one little simple basil leaf does to the entire depth and flavor of the sauce. 
and some of these are going to be the lucky cans that get two pieces of basil, extra basil -y. This is just full of vinegar, a clean paper towel, and cleaning off the rims. Next, we put our lids on the cans and made sure to screw the uh, rim part on just finger tight. You don't want to screw those on very, very tight. We just screwed them on with like a finger tightness, like I just said, and not using like the wrist strength. We placed all of our lovely cans and our steamers and our water bath. Whichever method that you choose, make sure that you are double checking cook times and all of that because each method's gonna have something a little bit different. We did not start our timers until the water was at a rolling boil. And after that with the steamer, we didn't start the timer until the gauge was in the green for our zone. And we set a timer for 40 minutes because it was 40 minutes for each cooking method. I'm not sure off the top of my head what a pressure canner timer was. And after that, voila, these beautiful cans are all done. They just need to sit on the counter for 24 hours until we can take the rim off. We water bathed half of them in my pressure canner. You can water bath in here, you can pressure can in here, it's really up to you. You wanna make sure it is a rolling, rolling boil. And uh, we did these for 40 minutes and that was per the recipe and the safe recommendation. And what I wanted to talk about with you guys is the steam canner. So if you're watching this and you're new to canning or you have been canning, you might be wondering what is this? Or you might have heard that steam canners aren't safe. So uh, for a while, the FDA had not approved steam canners and they have gone around and done the appropriate research to deem as of recently that steamer canners are in fact safe for certain high acidic um, different recipes. As I was saying with the steam canner, the beautiful part about it is that it uses up less resources at your house, meaning less electricity, less gas, all of that because it's really, really quick. So do your research. I'm gonna include a link to the one that we use today. It's really affordable, especially when you're looking at the price of some of these pressure canners or just the, pot, the price of like huge stainless steel pots. That stuff is really, really expensive. So I will include a link so that you can um, uh, look into that. I'm so excited to have uh, so many cans of tomato sauce right now. I know it's not that many to a lot of you really seasoned homesteaders who have been at this, but to me, it's a lot. And you gotta start somewhere and you gotta be proud of yourself any step of the way. Having about 15 cans of homemade tomato sauce is a huge win to me. This is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just the beginning for me uh, on my homesteading journey on my food preservation journey. So if you want to stick around, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button to see more, especially if you are on this journey yourself, just starting out. So thank you guys so much for watching, tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. Bye.